Okay. It is conference weekend, a big weekend for the National Party. Is this where we're going to get the sort of sizzle in the sausage, the big transformational policy that's going to sort of st uh, really pull up the National Party and set the campaign alight? We've already announced 20 policies so far this year and there's many more to come over the next few weeks and months. On Sunday it'll be 100 days to go uh, until the um, voting opens on uh, October the 2nd and uh, it's going to be a great conference. We're looking forward to it. You are going to see some new policy from us and there's much more to come. Law and order, economy, two hot areas at the moment. Our big focus over the next few weeks and months is to talk about fixing the economy uh, to get the cost of living down and get an economic growth plan for this country, but also restoring law, law and order and improving uh, our schools and our, and our health service. Uh, those are the things we're campaigning on, and so you are going to see some announcements around the economy and around law and order. Yeah, you, you said that you've put out 20 policies so far. That sounds like a lot of policies, but, you know... Uh, they're not shifting the needle for you yet, are they, those policies? These are not the big transformational ideas of the National Party that we're seeing now yet, are they? What New Zealanders are really focused on is practical, sensible, common sense policies that will take the country forward. Actually, they're over big, aspirational ambition uh, with, you know, pie in the sky numbers. They had that under Labour. People remember 100,000 Kiwi built homes, light rail by 2020, you know, dragging you know, hundreds of thousands of children out of poverty. That, that was the Ardern style politics. We've had six years of that, and, and actually Kiwis are over that. Uh, they're looking at the cost of living out of control, they're looking at inflation, they're looking at mortgage interest rates, they're looking at crime out of control, and they just want to know, you and the National Party, what are you going to do to help me? And that's what we're focused on. So how would you describe the Christopher Luxon style of politics? You just, just described Ardern. How would you describe... Christopher Luxon style. Practical common sense policies to take New Zealand forward and get the country back on track. Uh, and that's why uh, we've announced things like Family Boost, uh, $75 a week extra yeah, for um, I wanna, families with I want to talk example. to you about these policies, because we have seen some policies from you. We've seen a little reheating in the law and order space so far with a you know, revision of boot camps, um, sort of a back to the future um, in education, sort of reverting to some sort of national standards type situation, the extension to ECE that you talked about, but these are already sort of existing programs, um, a five-point plan for the economy to fix the economy. But w what is missing is... But so far, is fresh ideas, and not just from you guys. I would say this about the opposition, um, about the government too. But where are the fresh ideas? Well, I reject your characterisation of some of those policies. When it comes to education, for example, an hour a day of reading, writing, and maths, uh, yep. teaching the basics brilliantly is an excellent policy sure. that actually ends a thirty-year experiment on our kids. But it's not a fresh idea. I'm asking you, where are the well, fresh the ideas? Well, the, the problem is that what we've been trying for the last twenty or thirty years in education has failed. So our whole point is to actually go back to what so works. So you need some fresh Go ideas. back to what works, which is actually an hour a day of reading, writing and math, focusing on the basics. So um, actually, it might not be a fresh idea, but it's a good idea, and that's the whole point. We're going to do it. Um, so but so I, where I, are I, the fresh ideas? Well, we've, we've got um, a whole lot of new policies. I announced just a couple of weeks ago our Going for Housing Growth Policy, which is essentially dumping 30 years of demand growth into the market, new infrastructure funding tools for councils, incentives But that's for not going to win you an election. That's growth. not a big fresh idea that's going to win you an election. Are well, you telling me no that you're going to play small and you're going to play um, sort of conservative and incremental in all of these areas that uh, you say matter to Kiwis? If there was a silver bullet to fix the economy in New Zealand, we would pull it. There is no one big silver bullet in the same way that... Um, there's no one grand overarching thing that the Labour government talks about either. Actually, what New Zealand needs is a whole series of sensible changes to get the economy back on track, to restore law and order and to fix our schools and fix our health system. You say that there's no silver bullet to fix the economy, but you've put forward a five-point plan to fix the economy, a three-point plan to fix New Zealand. These are wildly simplistic, aren't they? Uh, no, those are communication devices to make sure people can understand what we're saying. But so, they're wildly simplistic. Well, you, you know, as you know, not, not everyone watches a, a, a 10 to 12 minute interview with uh, you on News Hub Nation. Plenty uh, of people do. A lot of people just watch the news. Uh, they, people go to the websites, people see the things on social media. Uh, these, are, these are an attempt to try and make sure people can understand what we're talking about. So when it comes to our overall campaign, campaign plan, we are talking about fixing the economy to reduce the cost of living. And everything hangs on that because economic growth and economic management uh, drives every other social outcome in New Zealand. And things like fixing law and order and improving health and education are only possible with a strong economy, and that's what National's focused on. And what I'm hearing from you and what I'm seeing and what I'm picking up about this campaign is this idea of everything's broken, 
we're going to fix it. Now, that was wildly successful for Wayne Brown in uh, Auckland. That, is, that seems to be a central driver for the National Party now too. We're going to fix it. Many people think that the, uh, the country is heading in the wrong direction. Just look at the publicly published polls. Uh, most New Zealanders think that. Many New Zealanders look at the state of the country and are very worried and anxious about it. It's not just inflation, but it's law and order. It's I'm the health about system, education. Your campaign, plan, you know, campaign sort of strategy or platform to fix things. That's what it is, isn't it? Our plan is to fix the economy, to reduce the cost of living and get the country back on track. Listen, I know that this is not a central plank so far anyway of the National Party, but what about inequality? What about it? Well, How are we going to fix that? <laughs> well, education is the, uh, the great equaliser in New Zealand, uh, and so that's why our Teaching the Basics Brilliant policy is so important. That's long-term stuff. Well, no, but you, Inequality exists well, right now and it's getting the, worse the, for well, many people. Well, I, I would point you to two things. One is education. You look at those statistics that came out uh, earlier this year or later last year, 2% of uh, kids at the age of 15 in a decile 1 uh, school, school in Auckland were able to pass an NCA Level 1 Literacy and Numeracy. And you, know, and you know that many people that's say a, that that's because of national standards. Well, that's, well actually, I would, I would say it goes back further than that. It goes back to a 20 to 30 year experiment we've had on children in this country. We're going to change that. We're promoting uh, teaching the basics brilliantly, a um, much more prescriptive curriculum, much more resources for teachers to help teach that curriculum. But this is your education policy. Curriculum. So that's one thing. The other thing I'd point to you to is the housing market, which has become completely dysfunctional. I have responsibility for that in my portfolio, and I am absolutely passionate about fixing housing in this country because it is a massive driver of inequality. That's why we've got to have a planning system that allows more houses to be yep. built and this makes it more affordable for people to exist. We're now talking about your housing policy, but what I'm hearing is that education, your education policy and your housing policy is your inequality policy. Well, those are two things I would point you to. I mean, overall... But will you have your, an, 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 a policy about how to address inequality that is standalone? Well, there's no, again, there's no one silver bullet to all of these things. You've got to look at these things in the round. I but would you, point you, you do to, have to isolate problems in order to be able to fix them. Sure, I'd point you to education as the great equaliser. I'd point you to um, housing, which is the big driver of yeah, inequality. I got all that. the economic evidence shows that. I'd also point you to that. our tax cut policy as well. I'd point you to our wider economic growth policies okay. to make New Zealand more ambitious, make us more prosperous, and help all New Zealanders get ahead. But how do you fix things like crime, which you say is so important to New Zealanders, which we know is really important to New Zealanders, in fact, at the moment, but how do you fix, fix things like crime without ever really addressing things like poverty and inequality? These are major drivers. You know that. Absolutely. And, you know, it's that old Tony Blair saying, right, you've got to be um, tough on crime and tough on the causes of crime. And so we are unashamedly making sure that we back the police and, tack and no, ta I'm not tackle talking, gangs. I'm not talking but, about crime. I'm but, talking about how do you solve crime without addressing inequality and poverty? Yeah, well, absolutely. And that's why, that's why we're so focused on fixing the housing market, on improving education and making sure that New Zealanders have more money in their back pocket to address those root, those root drivers. Labor's trickle talk, down. Labor, We're Labor's talking about talk, trickle Labor's down. Talked, no, it's not, not about trickle down. Labor, Labor's talked a lot about some of these things, but has that utterly failed to deliver? If I point you to some Yes, of, but that doesn't mean that we should con that we should continue to fail to deliver, well, right? I, I, that doesn't I, excuse the situation. Let, let me point you to, to one example, which is which I know a little bit about from my time in the police portfolio, the Te Ara Oranga uh, programme. It's an anti-meth programme um, in Northland. Uh, that was started under National, extremely successful, a community-driven initiative to get uh, people off meth um, in the community, they go after the people who are peddling the meth, but if you're actually on meth, uh, they work with local kuia and kamatua and um, the community to get people off it and help them stay off it. Labor promised to expand that. That has never been expanded beyond Northland. We should be investing in sensible, community-driven programs like that that work. Uh, the thing about this government is they've been big on the rhetoric, big on the talk, very, very poor at the delivery. Okay, somebody else who's big on rhetoric and who's big on talk is uh, the David Seymour from the ACT Party. They are snaffling up votes on the right, the sort of libertarian votes. They were out there, they were traditionally with the National Party, you know, thinking back quite a long um, time now. How do you fight the centre in this campaign and also sort of try and reach back uh, into some of those pockets and pull those people back into the National Party? That's quite a contortion. Well, look, at the end of the day, it's an election. You know, we're going to put out our policies. David and the ACT Party are going to put out uh, their policies. Uh, and we've just got to fight hard for every vote in the same way that Labor does with the Greens as well. We know we've got a multi-party system in this country. We welcome that. Uh, our goal is to prosecute our message 
Uh, our goal is to get around the country and encourage as many people to party vote for national as possible when we absolutely want as high a percentage of the vote as possible. But that is, is that a problem for you? You know, if you've got a strong, you want a strong ACT party, but you don't want them too strong, right? Well, our goal in the National Party is to get as many votes as possible, and we've just got to get out there and sell our message uh, and get around the country as much as possible. We've got 40 fantastic new candidates uh, running for the National Party this year alongside our hard-working team uh, already, and so they're in every pocket of New Zealand. They're in every community from Kaitaia in the north to Invercargill in the south, and uh, they're absolutely loving it. We're really proud of our refreshed team, uh, and we're going to go out hard and campaign for every vote we possibly can. It's going to be a tough one, isn't it? It's going to be a close election, but every MMP election is close, um, and so we're just going to go hard as 